Awesome. Okay, I'm going to show you guys a video real quick before we get started. Don't go anywhere, man. Hang out with me, okay? Come watch this video. Just check it out. It's time that we stop being ugly. I am going to drive a sword deep into your heart. Because I'm telling you, this thing is easy. Our mission statement of the gospel is to become love. So that wherever we walk, people want what we have. We so love the world that we give. What do you give? Everything that you are, you give. You don't hold anything back. Come on, man. You don't have the right to have a bad day. No, well, you don't know what I've been through. Man, you don't know what he went through to give you his life. Man, what is it worth to trade your life? Why would you want to hold on to something that's crushed? What if you were so possessed by God that it didn't matter what people said about you? God has given you dominion by His Spirit that every place the sole of your foot treads, it's yours. God grabbed your heart, not for you to be bound by the fear of man anymore, but for you to be possessed by the love of God. And if God is for you, who cares who's against you? You're not here for you, you're here for Him. You abide in Him. You flow with Him. You move with Him. Learn your identity. Who you are as a son. Stop being manipulated by lies and dominated by hell. Just surrender. Say, you know what, God? I didn't get it. Now I do. God, I want this. And God says, that I can work with that. Woo! And you don't have to say, well, God, what do you want me to do today? Just do it! Well, God, where do you want me to go? Just go! Well, God, who should I pray for? Everybody! Persecution's not here, but it's coming! And if you can't rise up now, in the midst of nothing, you'll never be able to stand in the midst of persecution. We're so used to being comfortable. We're so used to just staying inside our comfort zone. Holy Spirit has called the comforter because He knew that you were going to be uncomfortable to step into this thing. Rise up and be the bride. Be a passionate warrior that God created you to be. So you can burn with fire and the world can watch you burn. Why would you hide this thing? Why would you be a basket-headed Christian? Why would you put this thing underneath of something? It is meant to shine so that your whole house will be lit. It's meant to shine so that your city can be lit by one person. Everywhere you go, you're a conduit for God's grace, for His glory, for His mercy, for His compassion. You're a conduit for His fire to flow through, to touch the world around you. All you've got to do is say, yes, I want this, God. That's it. All you've got to do is say, I'm in. All that's required is that you're sick and tired of not having this happen in your life. And God says, you know what? If you're sick and tired of it, I want to fill you with me. When you're on the earth not to represent you, God, by mercy and grace, mercy woke you up today to give you one more day to manifest Him and not you. Come on, guys. This thing's real. Rise up. Be the bride. Be passionate about something. Give your life! Stop holding on to you! What are we doing? What are we doing with this? Come on, all you gotta do is say, I want it! That's it! There's no like... There's no secret except the mystery and it's been revealed! The mystery is Christ in us! The hope of glory! by love that we would destroy hell for a living. That wrecks me every time. <laughs> I just, 
I do that for me. <laughs> I don't watch me preach. But there's something in there. There's an urgency, man. Whew. I heard Bunky share this one. He was preaching at this, he was preaching at a church and something, it might even have been a, I don't know what it was. I think it was at a church. And he's preaching and, and this, <clears throat> he's talking about the urgency of Jesus. And this man comes forward and I mean, lots of people came forward. This one young man, I don't know how old he was. I think he was in his 20s. He comes up. He's been running from God his whole life, man. And he gives his life to Jesus. And he died. He had a heart attack right after he gave his life to Jesus. Right there at the altar. And they prayed for him to raise from the dead. And he didn't raise. <laughs> That's crazy. See, we, we have this thing about eternity. And we think, we think that... You know, we're going down this we're going down this road and we think that you know we you know you go to a, a, if you talk to people and ask them what the average life expectancy of their country is and I've traveled to different countries and some people are like, "Well, it's 80 years here or 70 years here." And young people are like, "You know what? Man, I I'm just like I ain't ready yet." Because it's I got a long life, you know. I, got, I mean, average life expectancy is 80 years. I'm only 13. I'm only 16. I'm only 21. But the truth is, is that eternity isn't here. Eternity is right beside you, man. And you can cross over at any time. It's not like out here. It will be great if that's what it was, but that's not it. Nobody knows. You're here today and gone tomorrow, man. I mean, why would you want to hold on to you? Like, I said, why would you want to hold on to something that's crushed? See, people's lives, whether you're a millionaire or whether you're living in a cardboard box, it's the same. Money isn't everything. Matter of fact, money gives more responsibility, more problems. People pray for money, and then when they get it, they got more problems. You need Jesus, man. We need Jesus. We need the King. We need the King in His kingdom. Can you put that up here? I'm going to stand up here for a little bit. Thanks. If I could just. Thanks, friend. <clears throat> I was going to be down there, and I'm up here just for a little. Thanks. Eternity is like right beside you. It's not, it's not way ahead. You're, you're right on the side of it. Anybody could cross over. Anybody could step over. And, and nobody knows when they're going. I understand people have disease and they're sick and they're dying. I mean, I get it. To them, eternity is close. That's why a lot of people like on their deathbed are like, okay, I want Jesus. Why would we wait until something like that has to come? Why would, why, I'm really tired of the fact that we got to get to the place where Jesus is all we got left to realize He's all we needed to begin with. Why would we have to come because of great trauma, great trial, and great problems? Why would, we, why would that have to happen? I mean, that's how it happened for me. But uh, man, I don't want it to happen in people's lives. I don't want people to go through it. I don't. I want to call people out of darkness, man. I want to speak life to people. I want people to come into the kingdom. Jesus is awesome. If we walk this thing out, if we walk this thing out, we're active. If we're active in the reality of Jesus and we're active in the kingdom and we walk this thing out, in other words, where your life is, is we, I, I hate to say led by God because then it makes you think like you have to hear God tell you to go over here. You have to, God has to tell you to eat peanut butter and jelly or tuna fish. And that's not what I'm saying. My, my being led by God is being moved with the compassionate heart of God for people. I mean there's times when someone will be highlighted, but man, before that time, you'll miss a thousand. And you have opportunities all day, every day. You don't have to go and be called I mean, you don't have to go to Africa in order to be like, to, to be going. You, you just go out of here. My gosh, touch somebody. You guys, tomorrow's Monday. Work. It shouldn't be your J-O-B. It should be your L-O-V-E. If you were living out loud for Jesus, it would be exciting. But because we're bound by the fear of man and that we're, 
we just don't know how to how to present it here's a good way to approach somebody how you doing how's it going man well that's not me okay well find your way talk to somebody be excited about what you got man you are approaching a season where it is right now we're in this good good tidings of great joy and and the majority of people are not in great joy they'll say hey praise God bless God amen brother but then when it comes down to like how you really doing it's not good man because life determines our joy but our joy is supposed to come from our salvation <clears throat> my security in him my my reality but the life my life hidden in him is supposed to determine my joy and that never changes like the common denominator of my life is the finished work of the cross I've been a Christian nine years man and and I don't need to dig in my Bible to try to find something else to preach it's the finished work I'm gonna preach this for the rest of my life I'm gonna share the finished work the simplicity of the gospel the reality of a life lived out loud for Jesus one that is bold <clears throat> about the about Jesus I mean God set me free from me not so I could pick me up again he set me free from that thing he set me free from myself so that I could live out loud for Jesus so that I could love people for a living so that I wouldn't be consumed with selfishness self-seeking and envy and everything evil is in there I talked about it this weekend it's it's the wisdom of the world that's sensual demonic self-seeking and envy and everything everything it doesn't say some things it says everything evil is in there now if I'm seeking God if I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the reality of my life is based on my right standing with God and I'm seeking after that I hunger and thirst for righteousness because God promises that I shall be filled like he doesn't, he won't hold it back from me. Man, he, he's excited about this. He's so excited about this. I mean, come on. In just a couple of days, it's going to be Christmas. <clears throat> Do you realize that, that angels, they hearken under the voice of God and, and they, they, they perform the word of God, right? Angels do. And when the shepherds were out in the field, there was a shepherd that was out there, or the shepherds were out there, and an angel, an angel comes and, and speaks to him, unto you this day, a Savior is born. And God gets so excited that He interrupts His own self. And He fills the sky with a myriad of angels. Like, like, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. My son is on the earth. And it's awesome. And I'm so happy. Glory to me in the highest, God said. And He's super, super excited. Because he's about to get his kids back, man. 30 years and counting. Like, this child born through Mary was going to change ev everything. 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 And Mary gives birth to this child. She's super excited. I mean, nobody knew what she knew. Nobody ever went through what she went through in the history of mankind. Ever. Nobody got pregnant like Mary got pregnant. There was no earthly dad. Come on, man. God placed Jesus in Mary's belly. And when you got born again, God placed Jesus in yours. <clears throat> when you give your life to Jesus, God places himself inside of you. Because he's excited about it. And he wants you to just believe that you are who he says you are. He doesn't want us to be mowed over by life, man. He doesn't want us to be the product of life. He doesn't want to, us to be the product of offense and frustration and bitterness and anger and all that stuff that the world gives. He wants us to be separate, man. He wants us to be a completely different breed of people, a race of people that the world has never seen. He wants us to be burning. He wants us to be lights in darkness. Shining, beautiful, brilliant light. That no matter how dark it is, we're there and it's not anymore. Well, you don't know what my darkness is like. Stop it. It says the eye is the lamp of the body. And if your eye is single, your whole body is full of light. 
But if your eye is not single, in other words, if you don't have the view, if you don't have the reality of why you're on the earth, you're not on the earth for you, you're on the earth from Him. And you're on the earth to represent Him in this lost and dying world. You are hope to somebody around you. We are ambassadors of hope. Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's exciting. Be passionate about Jesus, man. When you tell somebody that Jesus loves them, mean it. But you can't mean it unless you know He loves you. But it's not just about knowing that He loves me, it's about knowing Him who loves you. Because man, any Christian can say, well God loves me. Well I know. I tell people, I say, did you hear the good news? All, of, ever, all the time. All the time. Did you hear the good news? God loves you so much. Well I know. How can I help you? <laughs> well yeah, well, I, I know that. What can I do for you? Knock it off. What can I do for you? It's common. It's common. Attitudes are common. And attitudes are only there because identity isn't understood. I'm not being mean and I'm not poking at you and I'm not pointing the finger at you. But if the shoe fits, take it off. Come on, for real. Those are the shoes. Don't take them off. They're those shoes. Do you know when he talks about that? I, I, I look like I, I remember the history of, of learning about the shoes. They had spikes on them that dug into the ground so that they couldn't be moved. So that when they were in battle, they couldn't be moved. The spikes, they're like cleats, but bigger and deeper and stronger. In. So they dug in, man, so they couldn't be moved. It's amazing. You can have gospel of peace shoes that are so spiked and dug in that you can't be moved when stuff comes. To the world, Jesus is some kind of crutch, man. I talk to people all the time. Atheist. Well, you know, he's just a crutch. I used to think that. I used to think that Christians, they confess Jesus because they couldn't handle life. And the problem is, is a lot of Christians can't handle life. And I'm not being mean, I'm being real. Come on man, I'm just speaking it like it is. Look, if life is bigger to you than God, we have a problem. If the problems in life are bigger to you than the reality of the finished work of the cross, and your focus is on the problems in life more than it is the finished work of the cross, we have to change the way we think. We need to repent. Repent is change the way you think. We have to think with the mind of Christ. We have to think with the mind that God gave us to think with. He gave us His mind. He said that we're one spirit with Him. He says that we're flesh of His flesh and bone of His bone. That's your Bible. That's my Bible. I believe it. I'm going with that. Regardless, man, I go through stuff just like anybody else, but I don't wear stuff. I wear Him. I put on Christ and I don't take Him off. I don't take them off when I'm at home with my kids. I don't take them off when I'm out with my friends. I keep them on constantly. I don't join in conversations at the cost of other people. I'm not going to blend in for the sake of social status. I won't do it. God saved me from that. He set me free from that. I won't just fit in with the new grace doctrine that's out there. That anything goes, whatever. Hey man, back off. You're a legalist. What? That's not legalism. Jesus didn't sin and try to get away with it. He became sin so that you wouldn't have to get away with it. Because you should be crucified for it. But He paid a price so that you wouldn't have to have it anymore. He didn't pay a price for you to remain with a sin nature and a divine nature and be a bipolar Christian. He paid a price to crush sin nature. He paid a price, he paid a price to crush it. So that I wouldn't be sin conscious, I'd be sun conscious. It's different to be sun conscious. I'm conscious that I'm a son. Every day I wake up, I'm a son. I realize that God is for me. I realize that He's greater in me than anything in this world. I realize that He has given me His mind. I realize that He has given me everything according to life and godliness. I realize that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. Foundational principles of life of the God life. This is normal Christianity. I realize that He has put heaven inside of me because He wanted to. I realize that He wanted me so He got me. I realize that I didn't choose Him, He chose me before I ever said yes to Him. 
I realized that He loved me before I ever loved Him. And when I said yes to Him, I answered His yes to me. Every day. It never changes. It's common, common denominator stuff. It never changes. God so loved me that He gave His Son. Not so that I could hold on to me and have excuses of why I can't get this thing on with Jesus. He didn't pay a price for me to come up with excuses. He didn't pay a price for me to come up with stuff that separates me from God. He didn't pay a price for me to have the wrong picture of who God is. God so loved that He gave. God didn't so love that He took. Man, God has mercy. He's merciful. And His love endures forever. Does yours? His love endures forever. Does yours? I'm not yelling. I'm passionate. I'm not mad at anybody. I want the body of Christ to wake up and just be who God says she is. I see a lot of stuff, man, and it's not okay. Jesus is the reason for the season. But the problem is, is we make it maybe just a small season. And it's life. It, my season is eternity. Jesus is the reason that I have my life. Jesus is the reason that I have my kids. Jesus is the reason that I can manifest Him in the hope, in, in, the, in the face of every bit of adversity and every trial that comes my way. I can manifest Jesus. I can be around the angriest of angry people and I can love them in their face. When they're spitting in mine, I can love them in theirs. Because their sin against me doesn't have the right to produce sin in me. I love Jesus, man. That's everybody's got the same privilege. Everybody. We are supposed to be a flame. We are supposed to be a fire. What is the fire of God? What does it look like to be on fire? Well, if I poured some gasoline on your head and lit you on fire, you wouldn't care what people thought about you. That's what it means to be on fiber. fire. If I poured a quart of gasoline on you and lit you on fire, you would not be looking around to see who was looking. You would not be worried about what other people thought about you. You would burn. So what does it mean to be on fire at your workplace? You would burn and it wouldn't matter what your colleagues said. You have a relationship. Yeah, but I have a relationship with these guys. I've been there for 20 years. 20 years, man. They respect me. You know, I, you know, I don't say much, but they see my life. Well, what do they see? Do they see somebody that has a basket on their head and doesn't talk about it? Look, I understand that you don't swear. That's great. I understand that you don't make fun of other people. That's great. But are you taking a stand for Jesus? Come on, one day everybody's going to find out. One day we're going to stand before Jesus, man. You're going to stand before Jesus and you're going to be judged by your works. It doesn't mean that, that you're saved by Him. But that means that God set you free from you so that you can do His works while you're here. Do you know that, do you know that we have an inheritance in God? Do you know that God has an inheritance in you? And the only way that he receives glory from that inheritance is when you act out normal Christianity here on this earth to give him glory. There's a seal on you. There's a deposit in you. There is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have all of heaven backing this thing up. All of heaven, the same Holy Spirit. That means that everything that Jesus did on this earth he did because God lived in him, flowed through him, and did the works through him. And Jesus said, the same works that I do, they're going to do. Well, he didn't really, I heard people, I, I, all kinds of explanations for that one. Well, he's not really talking about the same. I mean, he was Jesus. But he said the same. That's not for me to heal the sick and take glory, because Jesus healed the sick and never took glory. Jesus healed the sick and pointed to God. I'm, I deliver the package and then I point to the one that paid the price for it. Come on! This thing's amazing. Man, give somebody Jesus over these holidays. Do something with the gospel. Do something with him. Dare to trust God. Dare to believe, well, I just, you know, I prayed before and it didn't happen. 
been there, done that, got the t-shirt, it's just not my gift. Don't bring that thing into this. Because it's about Jesus Christ. It's about Christ in you, the hope of glory. Love somebody. Dare to step up past your norm. Dare to run with Jesus, man. Dare to be bold for the gospel. I'm going to share a testimony with you. Gosh, I love you guys so much. So I feel like shouting Thomas. I just, I love God with everything I am, man. I said a quote today. I said, I won't force Jesus on people. But I will, but I will, I, but I refuse to not talk about Him to comfort unbelief. I won't force Jesus on somebody, try to headlock Him into it. But I won't not, I will not be at a place where I won't talk about His goodness and His deeds and His works to comfort your unbelief. Ever. I won't stay around a bunch of people that don't believe in God and keep my mouth quiet to comfort their unbelief. No way. I will provoke you with a godly jealousy. You can hate me for it, but I'm going to bring the kingdom. That's a good word for the holidays, buddy. It is. Well, I don't have any works in my life. Step out and touch somebody and you will. Just talk about Jesus. If you don't have a testimony that's in your life, talk about a testimony that you know is true from somebody else's. It's the same God that did it in them that will do it in you. It will impregnate the air for it to happen again. Man, talk about His goodness. Talk about His, His grace. Talk about real grace, man. <clears throat> real grace. The kind of grace that came through Jesus. Grace and truth came through Him. The law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. Whew, that's the kind of grace I'm looking for, man. I'm looking for what Jesus carried. He carried purity. He carried holiness. He carried beautiful, awesome, attractive Christianity. He carried the gospel. Gospel, by the way, means good news. Exciting. <clears throat> gospel doesn't mean bummer. So, so many times people are carrying bad news, but you are the ones, blessed are the feet. Blessed are the feet of the ones that carry the good news. You are carriers of the good news. Carriers, man, we've got the opportunity to manifest Jesus. Now, I've had people screaming in my face. I've had atheists. It's not going to stop me from sharing Jesus. Man, I wish that somebody... Listen, 34 years of my life, not one person came to me. In 30, listen, 34 years of destruction, of atheism, of anger, of bitterness, of thieving, stealing, killing, and destroying. Not one person came up to me and said, Jesus loves you so much. Not one. Not one. No one told me the hope of my calling. Nobody told me that there's music inside of you. Nobody told me that stuff. Nobody came up to me and said, they prophesied of my life or shared something great about what God said about me. Everybody told me, if you don't change your ways, you're going to go to hell. Hell is real. But people don't get scared into a loving God. They get repulsed by the church. They don't want to be a part of it. I couldn't stand the church because of that. And what if someone came up to me and told me how much God loved me? And what if I punched him in the mouth? And what if they said he really does? After I hit him. I don't know what I would have done. But I wish somebody would be bold about the goodness of God and the reality of the truth of what Jesus said about me. I wish that somebody would have been not so afraid of me. Because the fear of man got crushed in their life and the fear of God was on. Where they feared God and the fear of God crushes the fear of man. That no way can the fear of man enter into a life of somebody that is in the fear of God. Fear of God isn't afraid of God. It's in reverential awe of the King and the majesty and the glory and goodness of God. The fear of God is actually faith in His goodness. The fear of God is in love with God in such a way to where nothing else matters but reverential awe of the King. And because God so loved the world, God's not condemning and wanting to beat up people. 
God loves people. He's profuse. He's a lover, man. <laughs> he is love. Like, God is love. That's crazy. And God created you in His image. If He created you in His image, He created you in the image of love. Life has thrown trash on that reality. And we allow that trash to speak louder to us than the love of God. We allow situations that we haven't seen work out to determine whether God's good or not. Instead of the Christ. We can't afford that, man. We can't afford it. So I just, I just had a, I got invited to go and speak at, a, at Rhema Bible College with, with Kenneth Hagin and it was an awesome time. I had an awesome time there. Beautiful, amazing man of God. His wife Lynette, wonderful people. I just, they're wonderful, man. I had the a most amazing time there. I had just come back from a, another country and came there and doing stuff, but on on Saturday morning, the, the men's, the pastor's conference, they brought me in. I got to speak to the, to the, the, at the men's conference at Rama. It was awesome. Man, what a privilege, what an honor to be invited to that and get to, 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 to share the pulpit with such amazing men of God. I was so blessed and thankful. Saturday morning, we did communion and it was just great. It was awesome. So Saturday after that, I, I'm like, or Saturday morning, I went to work out at the gym. And I, went to, I went to the gym to, to do a workout and I get to the counter. There was a girl there from the day before that I'd seen. When she was walking out, I, I said to her, I said, there's something, there's a, such a creativity upon your life. I said, you're like, you're, you're like total like graphic design material. She goes, wow, that's really crazy. That's like what I want to, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm, I'm planning to do. I said, that's awesome. And I said, you get migraine headaches and stuff. She goes, yeah. I said, can I pray for you? That was the day before. The next day I come in and she's working behind the desk. I didn't know she worked there because I had worked out the day before. And I'm walking out, uh, or I'm walking in and I see her. I go, hey, you. I said, no way. I said, I didn't know you worked here. I thought that like we shared about the graphic design and you, you work at the desk at Gold's Gym. She said, no, I am. Today's my last day. I said, no way. She goes, I'm starting that profession tomorrow. I go, that's awesome. She goes, that was so cool. She goes, she said, you know, after you talked to me yesterday, I went home and two of my roommates go to Rama. Whoa. Two of my roommates. I Is it done? Okay. Sorry, you couldn't understood what I said anyway, so it doesn't matter. No, that wasn't tongues, that was just mumbling. Not murmuring, mumbling. <clears throat> There's a big difference. So, yeah, sorry. So, so I'm, she goes, I went home and I told my roommate, she goes, this, this crazy guy with dreadlocks <laughs> talked to me when I was coming out of the gym today and he like, man, he was like right on point with me. He hit the nail on the head. They go, he's speaking at Rama. She goes, no way. So she goes, it's nice to meet you again today. I said, so nice to meet you. I said, hey, I said, can I pray for you? She goes, yeah. I said, what's going on right now? She's had some kind of stomach. Oh, she had some kind of, uh, I think she was, is bulimic where you throw up? Okay, so she had that like her whole life. And, and that means that there's an identity crisis and you can't see you for you. When you look in the mirror, you don't see what God sees. And that's one of the things from that. You can call it what it is, but that's really what it is. Because if you see what God sees, you won't want to do that. That's all. I'm simple, man. You can name the Spirit, I choose not to. Jesus is Lord. I don't name spirits or ask them their names. I don't do it. I don't go demon hunting. I'm just a Christian. I love Jesus, and no matter what its name is, it's got to go. That's all. I don't make a, I don't write books on it. Name it, which its name is, ask it its name. They're all liars. Why would I ask it its name? I don't understand all that stuff. So I just keep it simple. Just keep it simple. Jesus is Lord, and other spirits aren't. The Holy Spirit is holy, and other spirits aren't. Simple. It's either God or it's not. 
Jesus is simple. You're either for him or against him. You either gather to him or you scatter from him. He doesn't say that there's a gray area. That gray area is demonic. It's manifested with the wrong spirits. Okay. So I'm talking to her and I'm praying for her and I start to share with her how like she's a Christian and that God, like God is a forgiving God because her stomach is, she has some kind of sickness in her stomach because of being bulimic for so many years and doing that to herself. So she's beating herself up again because she went through that. Now she's not bulimic anymore. She's not going through that. It's been a couple of years since that, but her stomach is wrecked because of what she did to herself. And I said, well, God's awesome. And I said, you know what's crazy is the Bible says, having believed unto righteousness, dash, by his stripes were healed. Do you remember when we were baptizing people, first time I came, remember the girls that were scarred, they had scars, and they came up out of the water and their scars were gone? So awesome. Because sin left a stain and a mark in their body of yesterday, from yesterday. And God's not wanting to leave that there to remind you of who you were. Which will humble you more? God removing them or leaving it there? I'm serious. Man, we've got people with hep C and all that stuff. Drug addiction and the lifestyle of drug addiction. We have people that have been prostitutes and, and, and they have sexually transmitted diseases that are in their body and they get forgiven and they wish that they'd never done that stuff. We've got, we've had people that, prostitutes that, that have been in that life their whole life and all of a sudden Jesus gets a hold of their heart and then they want to get married and they wish that they'd never been in that place. And, and, and God has restored them to virginity because He can. People will ask, not possible. You're wrong. Jesus is amazing. To where on their wedding night, they lose their virginity. Well, that's not possible. They spent their whole life. They, I mean, they reap what they sowed. No, no, no. In the gospel, you reap what Jesus sowed. Come on, man. If you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. But if you sow to the Spirit, it's just different. So I'm sharing this with her. She just starts crying. We pray. And God wipes out her stomach disease completely. Annihilates it. Her belly's on fire. Why? Because having believed unto righteousness, you're forgiven. Jesus shows the correlation between forgiveness and healing. He shows it. I mean, they lower a guy down through the roof. They get to the meeting in Mark 2, and, and dude can't get in because of the press of people. It's too many people. They're like, well, we're somehow going to get this guy in front of Jesus. They come up on the rooftop. They kick a hole in the roof. That's a bummer. They let this guy down in front of Jesus, and Jesus looks at him, and he says, take heart, son. Your sins are forgiven. Those guys didn't lower him in to be forgiven. They lowered him in to be healed. But Jesus doesn't talk about healing then. He says, you're forgiven. These guys are reasoning in their hearts. Like, who does this guy think he is? Only God can forgive sins. Jesus said, why do you reason in your hearts? Which is more important to say? Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven, or pick up your mat and walk. But that you should know that the Son of Man has authority to forgive sin, pick up your mat and walk. Shows the, the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the covenant. So the blood of Jesus forgives our sin, but His bruised and, bar and broken body removes the effect of sin and the stain of sin in the body. So this girl is overwhelmed. It's the gospel. It's the truth. It's sin. It's Jesus. So she gets completely made whole. She's just overwhelmed and it's a great time. So I leave and I'm like, man, I'm, cause I'm, I'm pretty tired because I only had two hours of sleep the night before. So I'm going to go and I'm going to rest a little. So I go, I have to go to Whole Foods, I have to stop. Whole Foods, another plug, good food. Good, I had to get my veggies and stuff. So I go to Whole Foods and you can have a lot of fun at Whole Foods because there's a lot of people that believe a lot of different things that go to there. <laughs> Serious, there's tattooed up, marked up, pierced up everywhere. How you doing? Can I help you? Yeah. You sure can. Yeah. Yeah. My peeps, man. I get to love them and have fun. So we had a great time at Whole Foods. It was great. And I go home. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to go back. I'm going to take a nap. I got to speak tonight. 
to the young adults and they let me speak and a bunch of Ramah students and Oral Roberts students came. It's a great meeting that night, but this is the middle of the day. I'm like, all right, I'm going to head home. And I got this strong urge in my heart to go to Guitar Center. But I don't, I need a guitar. I already have a guitar. I don't even need strings. I got strings. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to go there. I'll just go back in the acoustic room and play some of their guitars and have fun and talk to people about Jesus. And I'm like, I'm hoping it's close to the hotel. It's right over the hill from the hotel. So I'm like, oh, I'm right next to it. I'm good. I walk inside. I go by, go back to the acoustic room, and some guy's jamming, playing the blues. I'm like, yeah, awesome. I, I like, I, sometimes I just jump in and sing with them in there. Just let her rip. You're in a music store. It's fun. Sing about Jesus at the top of your lungs. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord God. Inside the music store, people are like, Come on, man, you ought to be passionate about something. And it ought to be Jesus. Right, right. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> we gotta finish the testimony. This is awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Jesus! Oh. Oh. oh, how he loves me. I'll live my life and you will see. So I walk over and there's these big, you know, the big amps that are all lined in the place. There's this kid, he's like, he's like jamming, playing this heavy, like, music. I'm like, dude, you're pretty good, man. He's like, thanks, man. And he's got this, I don't know what shirt, I forget the shirt he had on. I'm like, you like them guys? I said, you ever heard of this band? And I have a band that I'm friends with called For Today. They're like heavy, but all got all the word preaching the kingdom, man. Heavy, intense, like headlining the Warp Tour this year, this Christian band is. Crazy, because the Warp Tour is crazy, man. And Maddie, the singer, he's just on fire, burning. They're all burning for Jesus. I told this kid, I said, you ever hear them? He's, no, I never heard of them. And I said, well, here on my phone, I played them. He goes, wow, they're pretty good, man. I said, yeah, dude. He goes, why are you here? I said, man, I'm here for you. The kid's like, all right. Why? I said, man, I just love Jesus, man. I just I actually heard it in my heart to come here today. It's crazy. I'm from Pennsylvania, and I'm in Tulsa. And I said, and, and I, I didn't come here. I, I mean, I'm speaking in a place up the way, but man, I just heard it in my heart to come here. I said, I think it's for you. He's like, cool, man. He said, you're pretty cool. I said, you're Christian? No. He goes, well, you, you're pretty cool, man. You got like five minutes to talk? I go, dude, I'd love to talk to you. So he goes, well, let's go somewhere else. So we walked back into the keyboard room and sat back in the back, and he, he can play everything. And he's sitting there, and I said, dude, I said, so what's up, man? What do you want to talk about? He goes, well, man, you know, my dad, he committed suicide like 10 years ago, killed himself. I'm over that, and I'm pretty good with that, but yeah, like, and then he, he just wanted to talk. So I said, no way, dude. I said, you know God's your father, man? Said, no, man, no, no. I said, serious, man. I shared my testimony with him horrible, twisted stuff. And I showed Jesus how he rescued me. He goes, for real? I said, for real, man. So he loves you so much. He goes, dude, I wish my girlfriend was here because she's like religious and stuff. Like if she was here, man, she'd love to talk to you. She goes, he, she just left. She goes, you know, I have this, I have this child. It's like, like the 16-month-old little girl. I want to give her something, man. I don't got nothing to give her, man, you know? I'm like, dude, you're searching. He said, yeah, man, I just, you know, I don't know what it is. I said, well, what do you want to do? Let's play music. I said, no, that's awesome, man. He goes, you know what? They just went next door. Would you, would you go talk to her for me, my girlfriend? I said, is your child there too? He goes, yeah. I said, oh, dude, I'd love it. Let's, let's go. They go, my mom's with them. I said, no way. I said, come on, man. He goes, I'm going to call him and let him know. She said, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I got this friend. He just met me. I'm his friend. It's awesome because I really am his friend more than he knows. I got this friend and he's with me and, and he wants to come and meet you. 
She's like, who's your friend? I, I don't know. I just met this guy. <laughs> but he's really cool. And we prayed, and, and God touched his back, and he's like, it's so freaky, man. Crazy. Just, yeah, so uh, we're on the way over, okay? All right. Like, why? Because I just want you to meet this guy. He's really cool. You like him? He's religious. Okay. So we go over across the parking lot. I get this word about migraine headaches when we're going across the parking lot. He goes, she goes, he goes, dude, she's got one right now. I said, no way, dude, not for long. We're going there. We'll pray for her, okay? So we go in. We walk in. His mom and his daughter, she's in the shopping cart. Like, his daughter just is gleaming with light. This little kid that doesn't know any better that's been born into a life. And, and there's an opportunity in front of her. She's 16 months but I know Jesus so I can communicate with her and it sounds funny well she's gonna have to make a choice I get it but I've got light and I'm around this little kid and I'm gonna talk to her about Jesus hey girl Jesus loves you so much how you doing mom it's crazy he's telling his mom who is this guy she said he said mom this guy like thought he heard in his heart to come to guitar center. He walks up, starts talking to me. You got to hear this guy, man. He's crazy. And I said, how you doing? She goes, okay. I said, yeah. I said, I said God spoke to my heart about coming in here. And I, and, I, and I came in and I met your son. He's awesome. She goes, he really is awesome. He's a good kid. I said, yeah. I said, Where, where's, where's mama at? She said, he, she's in the back. So we went back. She's like, when we got back there, she's like, what's going on? I said, no, I said, God spoke to me about your headaches. I said, you got one right now. I said, God wants to touch your head right now, so you don't have no more. She goes, okay. He goes, he goes, I told you, he's religious. That's all he knows to say. He doesn't mean he's full of religion. He just means Jesus, Buddhism, Hinduism, it's religious. He doesn't have an encounter with God, so he doesn't know relationship. But if I tell him it's not religion, it's relationship, he doesn't understand my language at all. So sometimes when we say that, the people that we're saying it to have no idea what we're talking about. Walk out relationship and people will see it. Otherwise, you will say, well, they're Catholic, they're religious, they need born again. And then you don't even walk out what you say you know, yet you'll point the finger and tell them they need what you have. Be careful. Okay? That's not being mean. That's being real. Do you know that to he who has much, much is expected? Do you know that's true? Do you know the Bible says this? Said, he who knows the will of God and didn't do it, it's very bad. You read Luke 10 through 12. You read and see what Jesus says about people that knew the will of God and didn't do it. You read about being cut in two. It's the real, it's a big deal. You, you want to be a disciple? Read the definition of discipleship. It's right in there. It's pretty, it's pretty extreme. So uh, like we come to conferences and we're like, man, I want to hear some more. I want to learn about God. I want to learn this. The more that you know, the more that you're required to walk out. So be careful. Because my job is to make you very accountable for what you say you know. But it, it'd be better to be, to, to be made aware of what it is before you stand before the king and realize then, then it's too late. And that's not like, that's not pressure. We have a short opportunity that you are here to leave a legacy of what somebody that's possessed by God could do with the kingdom. It's not pressure. There is no pressure. Pressure doesn't get the job done. Passion does. Pressure doesn't get a job. I'm under pressure. No, you're under pressure from the world already. The world tries to conform you to it. That's pressure. The passion of Jesus, the compelled by love, the love of Christ compels me. The love of Christ compels me from the inside. It's pressure on the inside. Salvation working itself out with fear and trembling. It's pressure from the inside. Not pressure from the outside. I'm under pressure. I don't want to, I don't want to perform for God. Well, good. It's not about performance. Jesus performed. He did it. He walked this thing out so that we could step into an inheritance and we could just utilize the kingdom. We could further His kingdom. You guys alright? Kinda? Come on, the weather outside is frightful. But inside, so delightful. Since we've no place to go, 
Stop the snow, stop the snow, stop the snow. <laughs> Sorry. He said that song was out of the thing. But I brought it back. Sorry, man. Cancel that last line. So I'm, I'm sitting there talking to him and talking to his family about God and how awesome God is. And the girlfriend, she has some kind of a view of what God is. And he's like, he's kind of like, he's just like uncomfortable, but comfortable, but uncomfortable. And the little girl, and I looked at him and I go, hey, will you do me a big favor? Will you let me get your clothes today? What do you mean? I said, will you let me get your stuff that you're getting today? Can I just bless you? I don't want nothing from you. They're like, why would you do that? It's because I want to. Yeah, but what's wrong with you? <laughs> you're serious. I said, yeah. He goes, you're for real, man. I said, please let me do it. They're like, uh, okay. He's like, well, I'm not getting hardly anything then. I said, stop, dude. I said, you guys are, you're clothes shopping because you need clothes for stuff, right? I just want you to just get some, get some things. And the baby, they got some clothes for the little girl. His girlfriend got some stuff. And, and he's like, well, I'll, I'll just get a shirt. I said, stop, man. Now, come on. Let me bless you. Look, I don't want anything from you. There's no strings, dude. No strings. See, the world is like, well, nobody does anything for nothing. But God so loved the world that He gave. See, God so loved you that He gave. He didn't take. God so loved that He gave. And I said, just let me do it. Come on. And I'm like, please. I'm like begging them to let me bless them. That's so weird. I feel, there's a lot of times, man, that that's like, that's the thing. Pastors take me out to lunch, and I tell the waitress before the meal that I'm paying for the meal. The pastors, the pastors are like, we can take you out to lunch, and they always want to feed you and stuff, and that's cool, but I tell the waitress before the meal comes out that I got it. And then when the meal comes, and then when the bill, they're like, we get the bill, oh, it's already taken care of. Well, who did it? He did. Oh, no, you didn't. We wanted to bless you. Why didn't the hey, be a receiver. Stop. It's just different. It's awesome. What a good, what an awesome privilege it is to give. Come on, it's exciting. Try it one time. I'm serious. Bless your colleague at lunch, their, their lunch, the one that treats you the worst. Bless them. Do something. Even if they refuse it, do something. And if they refuse it again, do something again. Oh, wouldn't that just be something? If Christians were known by their radical generosity. If they were known by radical generosity. God so loved that He gave. That's what God's known by. He's a radical, He's radically generous. And that's us. That's who we are. So be a radically generous giver. Just give, man. Bless people. Overwhelm them. Bless their socks off. So they get freaked out by your existence. They make fun of you. They say mean things about you. Bless them anyway. Why? Because when you're reviled and persecuted, what do you do? You bless them. It's gospel. Come on, when people say all kinds of mean things about you falsely, what do you do? You pray for those people that despitefully use you. You bless those that persecute you. And when you're persecuted, you're blessed. Oh, man. It's not the world, because the world says this. Well, no, they treat you bad. You reap what you sow. I mean, they shouldn't have done that. They'll get what they deserve. Well, if you want what you deserve, go to hell. It's grace. It's mercy. Okay. Enough on that. So we get to the front. He gets some stuff. We get to the front. And he's like waiting for the catch. Like he's waiting, man. He's like, no, nobody. He, people have taken from him. I mean, they're hurting. People, they're hurting. The world's hurting. And we're their answer. The world is hurting. And we're their answer, church. We are the answer to the lost world. We are. Because we're not lost. We're found. We're not blind. We see. We have ears to hear. God has given us the privilege of hearing Him. Peace on earth. Good will towards men. Good cheer. Jesus says, be of good cheer. Man, don't be freaked out by the world. Be of good cheer. I overcame it. But we're overcome by it because we don't see why we're on the earth. We're on the earth to be a blessing. I don't give so I receive. I just give because that's what love does. I don't give going, well, I know that if I do this, then God will bless me back. I'm not talking about living without expectancy. But I give without, without the thinking about God's going to give me back. 
or else I give to get instead of just giving. It can, there's, it can be twisted. Prosperity is seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And when you do that, you become a, you become a radical giver. And then God will pour back on you. Because all these things will be added to you when you do that first. Come on, man. I know there's challenges stuff. It's okay. So we get up to the register, and the guy that's, the guy that's working the register is wrapped up in a lifestyle that he shouldn't be. And, 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 but I'm not going to say, well, I can't believe you're in that lifestyle. I'm going to love him. No one comes out of that lifestyle unless they have an encounter with the Father. Because right. so once you find out that the Father is real uh-huh. and you're a son, you realize that you weren't born that way. Because uh-huh. wow. so when you get born again, mm-hmm. changes everything. Yes. Thank you. Yes. But pointing the finger at that thing doesn't change anybody. No. They're used to that. People are used to being point the finger at So we get there and he's like, wow, this is, this, is, this is really nice. It's nice to meet you guys. And he's really just a nice guy, man. And she goes, she go, he goes, where are you guys from? He just starts a conversation. And they tell him, we're about an hour from, they drove an hour to get there. And, and he goes, well, we're, so you're all from here? She goes, no, we just met this guy. And the guy goes, okay. She goes, and, and, and this kid, his name's Jesse. He steps up and he goes, Dude, you're not going to believe this, but this guy, like, he just met me over at the car, guitar place. He comes over here, and like, he's getting all of our stuff for us. And the guy goes, why are you doing that? I said, because I'm a Christian. That's what we do. I'm going to change the face of Christianity. I will represent him, man. Regardless. Represent. That's right. Represent Jesus. And the guy's like, really? Now, when I said Christian kind of shrunk back a little and and then the mama jumped in yeah he's just doing this he doesn't even know us he really loves us it's awesome and I said I really do and I said God loves you man thanks he's ringing out his stuff and we get to the end to pay for it we walk out the door and and Jess is like mom I need a cigarette right now because he's waiting for the, the the claws he's waiting for the catch like what's the catch like he wants to get away from me now because it's too good to be true no God's so good because he is true God is so good he is truth verily verily truly I say to you truly if we have an encounter with this God everything changes your whole life will change you won't be battered by life anymore you'll be pottered by him Come on, life shouldn't have the ability to potter us. We shouldn't be crafted and look like it. We should be in this world, but not of it. We sh- we're sojourners. We're passing, th- we're passing through. Because our kingdom is not of this world. Although the kingdom lives in us, so we can bring that world here. Bring it. Are you getting anything out of this at all? It's really good. So we're going across the parking lot. And he's like... Dude, it was nice to meet you, man. Listen, bless you, dude. I'm going back into the store, the guitar store. I went, okay. I said, nice to meet you. We'll put the stuff in the car. He was like, hey, man, nice to meet you. Bless you. And he walks away. He goes in the guitar store. And I'm sitting out there with his mom. And I go, I go, man. I said, he's really hurting. She goes, yeah, after his dad, after his dad took his life, him and his brother are just hurting really bad. They go, you know, she said to his brother, the heroin addict, she goes, he just got, Jesse got locked up. I said, why is he in the music store all the time? I mean, doesn't he have like, doesn't he have instruments and stuff? She goes, no, he comes here a couple times a week just to come in and sit. And he sits in there for hours and just plays guitar, just jams in the guitar store because it's a place for free instruments. He can just go and play all the time. I go, no way. She goes, yes. She goes, about a year ago, I think it was a year ago, he got locked up and he had to sell his instruments in order to get bail to get out. I go, so he doesn't have one. I said, I'm going to go get him a guitar. She goes, are you serious? I said, I am. She goes, oh my God. I said, I love your son. She goes, you really do? I said, I do. So I went in there and the girlfriend was in there walking around with the daughter. And I said, hey. I said, what kind of guitar did your your boyfriend have before he sold it? She showed me. And Jesse's over there. He's playing the drums. He's got headphones on. He's playing the drums. He's really good at every instrument he plays, man. He's awesome. It's his gift. He's like, he's gifted. 
kind of like your whole church, pretty much. <laughs> I'm serious. Little kids, are, they come out of the womb with guitars. It's awesome. <laughs> Prophesy. No, but it's true. Lots of musicians here, man. Amazing. So, so I go back in and I find him and I'm like, hey, dude. I said, take them headphones off, man. I said, come over here with me. He goes, why? What's up, man? I go, come here. I said, you, I said a year ago you got out of jail. He goes, how'd you know that, man? Because he's already freaked out. I said, because your mom told me. Okay. All right. It's <laughs> cool. I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not a fortune teller. I'm a Christian. It's normal to hear God. Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. And the strangers, they will not follow. So, so I said, dude, you had to sell your guitar. Yeah, man. I said, you, you come in here all the time. He goes, yeah, like three or four times a week, man, jam. I go, no way. I said, which guitar did you sell? So we look at these guitars. And I said, dude, I want to get you a guitar. He's no, man, no way. He's ser- knock it off, man. I said, no, I'm serious. He goes, dude, don't, don't, don't blank with me, dude. Don't do that. I said, no, I'm serious. He goes, knock it off, man. He goes, you're going to make me cry. I said, listen, I'm not here to make you cry, but I do want to bless you with a guitar, man. And he goes, which one was it? He goes, it was kind of like this, but it had a, a Floyd Rose whammy, and, and it had this. And I go, no way. And I looked around at this whole rack. There's like, how many guitars are in Guitar Center, electric guitars? It's a whole rack, dude. It's huge. I look on the rack, and there's just one guitar I look at, and I looked at it, and it was like highlighted. And I, I went over to it, like it wasn't a different color, but to me, it, it just stood out. And I went over to him and he goes, dude, that's my favorite blanking guitar in the whole store, man. He goes, don't mess with me, dude. I took it off the rack and I go, come on, man, it's yours. He goes, stop, man. Knock it off, dude. I go, I'm serious, man. It's yours. I don't want nothing from you, dude. I just love you. He goes, don't do this, man. Don't. I said, come on, man, let's go. I'm serious. We walked up to the front to the guy. Oh, dude, this is so beautiful to me. I'm not saying this for any reason except to provoke you. This is, this is what you're created to do. You're created to be radically generous. You're created to bless people. You're created to love people. You're created to love people without strings attached. So we go up to the front. They put it on the counter. And they go, dude, we're going to get this guitar. He goes, wow, this is nice, man. Jesse goes, dude, this is crazy. I said, we need to get a case, Jesse. You got a case? No, man. Oh, so we're trying to get a case. We're going through. We get a case. Fit the guitar in perfect. He goes, wow, man. He goes, you're Jesse, right? He goes, yeah, man. He goes, man, I'm finally leaving your store with something. <laughs> the guy goes, yeah, this is really nice. He goes, Jesse goes, dude, you, you, you got to know something, man, to this guy that works there. He goes, I... I met this guy like an hour and a half ago and he came in here and just talked to me and then he prays for me and my back gets healed and then we walk across the street he knows about my girlfriend's headaches my girlfriend's headache like her migraines they're not gonna come back and and and, and then he gets my family all these clothes and then we come back to the store I'm trying to get away from him he goes and now he's buying this guitar for me he is and he doesn't even know me man the guy looks at me and he goes, is that true, man? I go, yeah. He goes, what do you do? I said, I love people for a living, man. <laughs> he says to me, he goes, he goes, man, I, I just want to tell you something. He goes, this, what you're doing right here is the gospel. I said, that's right, man. This is the real deal, man. This is the gospel. God so loved that he gave. I said, and God is giving this guitar through me because he loves Jesse and he's not expecting Jesse to do anything for it Jesus did everything for you and for him and for all these people he goes I just want to shake your hand man and tell you that this is amazing I said I love you man he goes I I know you do man I'm a Christian I said awesome dude (laughs) Jesse goes he's 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 dumbfounded he he's awestruck the love of God is touching him. And he's like, oh. and we walk to the next door and you have to go to the guitar center and you got to take your receipt to the next guy before you walk out the door. This guy's like, wow man, nice guitar. Jesse goes, dude, you got to hear something, man. 
and he's testifying of God's goodness to this other guy. And this guy's not a Christian. He goes, oh, that's cool. You're a good guy. I said, now listen, it's not about me being good. It's about Jesus, buddy. And I shared the truth of who God is. See, he's been hurt by church. All that stuff. And people have all kinds of hurts and stuff. Come on. Really? Life is short. Why would you allow what somebody messed up on to determine your value? Why would you allow somebody that went off center to determine your value? Jesus Christ determines your value. Why would you allow what somebody did or didn't do to determine what you would do? And why would you allow that to touch you in such a way where you walk away from something that is so good? Why'd you, why would you allow somebody's hurt Somebody hurt, somebody that hurt you or offended you, why would you be offended by something that they should have known better not to do? What makes it better? You not knowing that you shouldn't have been offended by it or them not knowing that they shouldn't have done it? <laughs> Come on, listen. Somebody hurts you because they don't know what, who they are or what they do. So now you get hurt by it and you have a reason for it because you say that they should have known better. But shouldn't you have known better than to be hurt by what they should have known better not to do? What's the better thing? What's is better? Come on, none of your excuses are valid, buddy. Think about that. If somebody hurts you, it's because they don't know who they are. They don't know what they're doing. Listen, and if you get hurt by that, that just means that you don't know who you are. Because you should have known better than to be hurt by what they should have known better not to do. You're going to stand before God and none of that stuff is going to be valid, man. None of that stuff is going to be like, you know what, God? If they wouldn't have done that, then maybe... Knock it off. Get born again. Have an encounter with the Father. Give your life completely to God and stop having excuses to remain bound to lies and twisted Christianity. Dare to raise the standard, raise the bar to normal Christianity. Dare to rise up, body of Christ, and be God's girl. And represent and represent Jesus to a lost and dying world. Stop being lost and stop getting hurt and stop being offended. None of that stuff makes any sense to God. Man, if anybody had the right to be offended, it would have been Jesus. They hung him on a tree. Jesus Christ is hung on a tree. Can you see Jesus? I'm out of here. Forget it, God. You want me to die for them? No way. They don't even care about me. You can't picture that in Jesus' mouth. You ought not picture it in your own. I'm not being mean. I'm telling you that all these things and all these little tiny stuff, it's just all junk, man. It's from the devil. It's demonically inspired to get your focus off of the king. It's demonically inspired by the devil to get your eyes off of Jesus so that you get your eyes on how bad life is and how much they hurt you and how much this. It gets your eyes on gossip and telling people that, well, they shouldn't have done that. Well, you know what? And then all of a sudden behind the back of the person, come on, man, all that stuff is junk. Drop it. Man, drop it. Make your New Year's resolution now. Say, God, I am not going to think that way anymore. Bless those that hurt you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Bless those that do things that they shouldn't have. Stop allowing that to be your Lord. Jesus is Lord. If anybody had the right to have attitude, it would have been Him. But He thought that you were worth dying for. And you don't really have the right to talk about people unless you're willing to die for them. The day that you'll die for the person that you're gossiping about is the day you have the right to talk about them. If you're not willing to take a bullet for them and jump in front of a bullet to save their life, then be quiet. Come on, man. I'm not being mean. This is not, this should not be normal in the church. What makes us any different than the world if we got that stuff in our language? What makes us any different? There's no difference. We can't afford to have that in our mouth. We can't afford to have that in our thinking. Come on, people do stuff that they shouldn't. Don't be offended by things that they shouldn't have done. Know who you are and realize their created value. You don't have the right to look at anybody according to the flesh anymore. 
You have to see them for their creative value. Scripture, it's right before your new creation scripture. Therefore, if anybody's in Christ, it's a new creation. If one died, then all died. And if all died, then those that live ought not live for themselves, but live for the one that gave himself for them. We once regarded people according to the flesh, but no longer do we do that. We regard them to their created value. If somebody's messing up, it's because they don't see who they are. Because if they do, they won't. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about love. I'm talking about a relationship with God. So we walk outside and Jesse's mom's out there. She's like, wow, you really did. Wow. Jesse's like, dude, I love you, man. I said, come here, dude. Give me hugs. No, I didn't get him in a headlock and say, pray my prayer. I said, there's no catch, man. I said, you know what? Here's the catch. Give me a hug. Oh, no problem, dude. I love you, man. So come on, let's go get in your car. Let's go put this stuff away. I got to go to my hotel. It's time for me to take a nap. He's like, that's awesome, man. Dude, like, why? God, set me free from me. And he loves you so much, man. He loves you so much. He's like, dude, this is awesome. I said, bless you. Gave mom a hug. Told her I loved her. She goes, I know you do. We love you, like, so much. I said, awesome. Bless you. When all that stuff was going on, there were Rama students that were all around. I didn't know they, I didn't know because I never, I didn't meet them. But they, I, two of them I did. They came up to me in the guitar store. I said, please, I said, I, I can't, I can't talk to you right now. I, I'm, I'm in the middle of something. Love you guys. I'll see you tonight at the meeting. So when I got to the meeting, there was a whole bunch of them that were out there in, around there calling each other, like talking in the store right now. Like, what's he doing? I don't know what <laughs> But they saw it all go down. So when I shared the testimony, there was a whole bunch of eyewitnesses that were in the midst of it all. And I didn't do it because they were watching me. I did it because I'm a Christian. And I love God. And He loves us. Guys, we have a short time period. We are here to leave a legacy of what God is in people. And all He's asking you to do is to give up who you were never created to be to begin with. So that you can just begin to be who God created you to be. It's really it. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, if there's anybody that doesn't know Jesus, if you don't know him, come on up here. Come on. That's silly. All of you, all of you know him. Awesome. I don't believe that. (laughs) Not at all. If you don't know Jesus and you've never given your life to Him, this would be a really good time for that. Is there anybody that would say, I would like to give my life to the King? Come on. Anybody at all that doesn't know Him that wants to. Anybody at all. Is there anybody in here at all that doesn't know Jesus that would like to say, I'm giving you my life because it's not mine? Anybody at all? If you don't know Him and you want a relationship with Him, with the real God, with Jesus, if that's you, come up. Which one of you? Oh, so proud of you. Champion. Urgh. Women are lionesses when this thing happens. The lionesses are the ones that do the hunting. It's awesome. God's so pleased with you. Come on. Is there anybody else that would say, I don't know Jesus, but I really want to? Come on. Don't allow life to speak to you louder than Jesus. I'm proud of you, man. Are you too? Yeah. Champions. Come on, God.
these your boys? Are these yours? No? Okay, no, it's okay. You too? Yay. Come on. Who else? Come on. I challenge you to give your life to the king. Come on, man. Why would you hold back from Jesus? What are you really living for? Come on. Jesus is Lord. Come on. Have boldness and give your life to the king. Stop running. Come on, who else? <laughs> you should do it. You should give up. You should just surrender. Give up. Who else? Who else would say, I haven't and I need to? You should come up right now. You should start your brand new life with Him. Come on, guys. This is the best thing ever. If you've been hurt and bummed out by church stuff and you've walked away from Jesus, get up here. Come on. Stop holding back on the king. What are you really holding out for? What are you waiting for? Come on. If you've been hurt by church stuff and you haven't surrendered to Jesus because you just got hurt and you're just tired of being hurt, give up already and just come up here. Come on. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can feel the aggression of God's love. It's crazy. Awesome. Come on. Come on. Come on. Who else? Come on. Get up here. Come on. Come on. Who else? Get up here. Don't walk out the door. God will get you before you get to your car. Get up here. Just do this. Say, I'm done with that stuff. I want this. Come on. Ah, be free Jesus I need the worship team to just play jam we're going to do this if you're in this place and you haven't I need you up here I need you to give your life to Jesus come on <laughs> awesome proud of you man hey old navy proud of you man <laughs> ah Jesus, come on, come on, I can't stop, I need, whoever you are, I need you to obey your heart right now, if you're in that place, I want you up here, I want you to obey your heart, if you're in that place, I want, your life will change, and you won't be bound by that stuff, I want you to give your life to the reality of the gospel, come on, Jesus, no shame in this game, man, it's the truth of Jesus, you're giving your life to the truth of who God's called you to be. Come on. Ride with me. Champions. Ah, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> ah, Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 Holy Lord God, Holy Jesus, King of Glory. Now we're going to pray in just one second, but I want to remind you of something. I mentioned something tonight, that if sin, a lifestyle of sin, if it brought sexually transmitted diseases into your body, if it brought some kind of disease into your liver, if it brought that stuff, if your lungs are shot because of a lifestyle of smoking or whatever, and you've been forgiven of that, God wants to remove the stain that's in your body. Because that's what He does. He removes the stain. And God says that when you get forgiven, 
that forgiveness and healing are the same thing. James 5.14 says, if anybody's sick, let him call and let the, let the elders pray over him. I want the elders for the church to come up here. I want you to come up. We're going to pray for everybody. Listen, God wants to heal you physically of stains and marks that you have in your body from a lifestyle of sin. God wants to take that stuff out because he can. He wants to heal livers. He wants to take hepatitis C out. He wants to clear that stuff from you. So if you're out here and that disease is in your body, I want you to come up and be a part of this right now. God will take your addiction from you. God took my addiction from me. 22 years of addiction, 22 years of drug use. God in a moment took that stuff out completely. There's no draw or call on my life to be addicted. Because I was called to be addicted to Jesus. So right now, it's good. You know how they say when you're addicted, you switch your addiction to something else? When it switches to Jesus, there is nothing greater. So right now, your addiction is going to be switched to Jesus, and it's a healthy one. It's what you're created for. You're created to be addicted to Jesus. So right now, that full-on addiction is coming. And that addiction clears your body of sickness and disease and all that trash that you brought in through drugs and a lifestyle of sin and promiscuity and all that trash, all that junk. Jesus is Lord. I told you that tonight there'd be an explosion and this is the bomb. It is. It's awesome. Yay. Come on, God. Okay. I know that we're praying and stuff, but God's already landed on people. It's just how it is. It's God. I want you all to pray with me right now. Listen to me. Right now we're saying that Jesus is Lord. Right now we're saying that Jesus was crucified for me on the cross. Right now that Jesus, we're saying that Jesus was crucified for me and that all my sin was hung to Him on that tree. And right now when we pray this, God is going to forgive you He's going to remove your sin and He's going to remove the stain that sin left in your body. Because it's the gospel. Having believed under righteousness dashed by His stripes, you're healed. So I want you all to listen to me right now. Everybody, look at me. There is no shame in this right here. This is the best thing you can ever do. This is not a shame thing. This is a what you come up here and you say, God forgive me. And God says, boom, forgive it done he'll never bring it up again he crushes it he crushes even the existence of it the state in your body he just says <laughs> and removes that thing it's awesome it's too good to be true that's why it's the gospel it's good news i stand before you as a man that was forgiven i stand before you as a man that was healed of that stuff that's that that that, that stuff that was in my body jesus removed it re removed it all the brain cells that were fried god removed them he put new ones in Come on. So Father, we thank you. I want everybody to pray. Lord God, right now, we say yes to you. We're not just coming up here out of emotion. We're coming up here in surrender. We are giving our life to you. We're not taking it back. We say yes to you, Jesus. God, forgive me. Take away my sin. Even the memory of it. Put back in brain cells that I fried. Put brand new organs in my body that I ruined. Brand new livers. Brand new bloodstreams. Brand new skin. God, I've been forgiven. I have surrendered. I have come to Calvary. I say I am picking up my cross and I'm going to carry it and I'm going to live my life out loud for Jesus Christ right now I am yours and you are mine Holy Spirit have your way with me in Jesus name addiction I command you get out Right now, heroin addiction, 
get out in Jesus name right now I want everybody to pray over somebody right now everybody I want you laying hands on somebody if you're out there pray for somebody right now Jesus name God I thank you Jesus name God I thank you Jesus name God I thank you right now Holy Spirit come Holy Spirit come baptize them Holy Spirit come Jesus 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 I need somebody up there in waiters in the baptism tank somebody up there that will help baptize I want everybody that just got born again to be up there in that tank right now everybody if you just gave your life to Jesus I need you to go out that door right now everybody all of you everybody that said yes to Jesus don't wait go out that door and up them stairs come on all of you right now every one of you all of you come on we're gonna drown you in the water go we're gonna hold you down to the bubble stop go come on go everybody everybody that just gave their life to Jesus I want you all upstairs right now Jesus come on come on all of you Pastor Chuck I'm going in I'm going in the tub yes you want to come in with me come on let's do it come on man let's do it yeah we're going to have a baptism service let's work it are you Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Cancer, I curse you and command you get out right now. In Jesus' name, get out. Get out. In Jesus' name, right now. In Jesus' name, go. In Jesus' name, right now, get out. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, God. In Jesus' name, cancer, get out. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Every cell be healed. Jesus' name. Man, love you. I gotta get up there. I gotta go baptize. Keep jamming, man.
this is this guard right here that we're getting ready to baptize. <laughs> been running, running scared, not knowing what's right, not knowing what's wrong. And tonight when he said that, it touched me. And I believe it's time to go home. Jesus!
worship you. 